Now we're going to sim monoisocentric head and neck. For a monoisocentric head and neck, as we said, you want to set your up down as you, first of all, you're going to ballpark the patient. In out, you're going to choose the thyroid prominence. Well, actually, let's back up a little bit. Get your patient on the table, lay him down, get him straight, use the laser to get him completely straight. Use a C headrest or above on a head and neck to hyperextend the neck so that you have good access to everything that you need to treat. Use shoulder pullers if necessary to pull their arms down. It's best to make a long mask if your facility does so. If you make it with a long mask, you have the shoulders in the correct location, they will always be put into the correct location upon treatment. Now, hyperextended the neck, got the mask made, next we're going to ballpark the patient. Now, just as a rule of thumb, you're going to go up down to about the angle of the manual. In out, you're going to use the thyroid prominence. That's a good place to start. So, we're going to go ahead and use the thyroid prominence as the in out, and I'm actually going to shut my jaws down to show you exactly what it will look like as a monoisocentric. As you can see, our laser, our in out point is right here. We're going to shut down Y2, which is furthest away from you. As soon as I can find zero, keep passing it. So we've got our jaw shut down so that we have a non-diverging beam right through here. You have a diverging beam inferiorly. So well, I'm going to go ahead and just for the sake of argument, I'm going to mark the patient right there. You don't necessarily want to do that at first, but I want you to see where the CR is. You want to open the width to include the clavicles and go inferior to just below the SSN. So thyroid prominence, SSN, include the clavicles almost all the way out to the shoulders. This is a big supraclavicular field where you're going to get the, the supraclavicular nodes. Up down, since it is monoisocentric, we're going to kind of ballpark it up down to this point. At this point, you want to go ahead and go fluoro. Once you've fluoroed, the doctors decide what they want. We're going to pretend this is all good. You're going to notate everything except for the table vertical. You're going to come in, and I want you to go ahead and mark the inferior. And the width, I would go ahead and just put corners on here. This will make, make it to where if you have to move up down when you go to the laterals, you will still have your correct diversions. Something like that. So you get your CR, inferior border, this shows the field length, and these corners that will show the field width. Before I move the gantry, I'm going to demonstrate what might happen. If, in fact, the doctor, when he looks at the lateral, decides, I want to change that vertical because you set it wrong, let's say they drop it this far, and that's where he wants the table vertical for the laterals. You now can see that our divergence is showing that the field is too big. So what we would then do is change our field size to go back to what you marked on the skin. That accounts for the divergence. Oh, I've got the wrong thing going on. I am so sorry. Okay, you move that. And then Y1 is closest to you. We're going to make that like that. So you change the field size to go back to what you marked on the patient that will then have your field as the doctor wanted it because he looked at it with the isocenter in a different place because the divergence whether you move up down it's going to either shrink the field or make it larger but what you marked on the skin is going to incorporate exactly what the doctor wanted to have happen in the first place but once again for the sake of argument we're going to go back table vertical about there about the angle of the mandible 
you're not going to be taking any films yet. You're coming in, you did all of these marks, just like we talked about. You're going to come in, and you're going to go ahead and rotate to the lateral. You rotate to the lateral, then we will change the field size to where we close Y1, open Y2, thus maintaining our non-divergent line at the CR, correct? I say that as if any of you are going to answer. Now, Y2 is going to open. Much better. Comes Y2. I've got kind of a predetermined idea of where I'm going to go on my old marks. Y1 is still open. As you can see, we're going to close it down until we get to zero. Coincidentally, it's at the laser because that's where zero is. Hey, look. Zero. Happy accident, huh? So, the next thing I'm going to do is decrease my width. What are you going to do? See, my width was way big before because we had to encompass the clavicles. Head and neck, we don't necessarily want to do that. You're going to go something like this where it's just posterior to the lips, anteriorly and posteriorly, since we've got, you're going to be down close to, a little bit below where the ear is, just posterior to the mastoid tip. Maybe a little more than that, but that's a good place to start. So since I've got that, now I'm going to walk out of the room. I'm going to go floral. Floral, make sure everything's cool. Once the doctor comes in, she says, that's great. I like this. Then notate everything, including the table vertical on the super clap, because it's a monoisocentric. We're going to keep the same isocenter. If they move it up and down at all, you're going to be able to fix your field size from the interior, as we just said. So, doctor said, that's great, I like that. We're gonna come in and we're gonna mark the CR. Which is right there. And mark it on the lateral as well. I don't have an image intensifier out, just for the heck of it, so that I don't run into it again. You would rotate up a little bit to where you can see the lateral laser, mark your lateral laser, and then go back Tonight. Now we've got a three-point setup. I was kind of sloppy on that. It's off a little bit, but that's all right. So we're not going to be making any more moves. So we can go ahead and mark the superior, mark the anterior corners. You can even mark the whole field size if you want. So we've done that. Now we're going to start taking films. If it's super old school, we're going to have to have a dose point on here for the cervical nodes. So you'll pick a point one to two centimeters anterior to the posterior border and put your dose point on. Go ahead and take your film. Get it approved. Once you have that film approved, rotate over and take the contralateral. And then once you've got the contralateral taken, rotate up to the anterior reset your field size and then put some dose points there as well. You're going to choose one side or the other and you're going to go three up and three over from the SSN put your dose point for your supraclavicular. Okay, so find the yes, S, S, SSN three up, three over, put your dose point on. Look, that falls right here along this clavicle just inferior, about a centimeter inferior to what we chose as our CR. Put a dose point there, take your anterior film, run your other lateral and your anterior at that time and turn them both in. Now you've got all three films that you need, mono isocentric setup. The patient doesn't move, you've got a natural um, match line. You don't have to do anything special when you treat this patient. You just treat, 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 you're all good. You don't have to move them up down, nothing, nothing crazy. I've seen some facilities where they will make you change the depth on the anterior that won't make a difference with your match line. If you move it up down, you can move, you could lay this patient all the way on the floor and that match line would match. 
the inferior um, divergence would be much larger, but if you move the patient up down a little bit because you have a different SSD than your laterals would indicate, that's okay. I think I've covered everything for a monoisocentric simulation. We'll do a non-monoiso next.